Hi, my dear friends, welcome to the first session of our render set of workshop. My name is Hussein Meshayhi, and I hope that you are all doing well wherever you are. This is the first workshop uh, from our V-Ray 6 workshop series, and it will be dedicated to the subject of render setup. In this one, we're going to learn all about render setup. And in this session, we're going to start mostly talking about the pixels. So let's begin now. As a 3D artist, uh, the main thing that we are doing is we are transforming a 3D space that we have created after we have been working with a scene inside 3 Max or other uh, 3D modeling softwares like SketchUp, Revit, and we are trying to transform it into a final 2D image. And when we are saying render, that's what we mean. It's a final image, which is in 2D. And then as artists, we can just publish it on social media platforms or give it to our clients, whatever our requirement is. So the process, this is the process that we call rendering. And that is what we're going to talk about in this workshop. So this process starts with an idea. So we have a concept of something that we want to build and then we take that idea and bring it inside a modeling software. Now we have a variety of modeling software available to us, 3ds Max, uh, AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, doesn't really matter. Some of them are more popular than others, mostly 3ds Max, but it doesn't really matter. So we take our idea and model it and the result will be a 3d scene after that we can just uh, assign different materials to those 3d objects that we have created and after that we go about lighting the scene and at the final step we're going to take our renders so the last stage is taking the renders and rendering but after we have uh, modeled the space, we have the option of doing lighting first instead of material and then go about assigning the materials. It doesn't really uh, matter. It's just a matter of preference. But what matters is that uh, rendering is our final step. Okay, now let's move on to the next topic, which is our uh, result, which basically, as I said before, is a 2D image like this one. And this image has different features. And one of the most important features that we're going to discuss right now is its file type. So basically, we can have a file type of PNG, JPG, or bitmap. And each file type could have uh, certain benefits or certain features that the others uh, may not necessarily have. Maybe one of them would be better at displaying the correct colors and so on. So uh, JPG is uh, one of the more prominent uh, file type formats when it comes to render images and 80% of our renders would be in three, uh, JPG. Let me just show you where you can uh, check it. You can just right click on a file and go to properties and inside properties if you look at type of file you will see jpg file which is basically the file type of this image now let me just quickly recap so like i said 80 percent of our renders would be in jpg now it is possible that some other formats may be uh, possessing a higher quality when it comes to displaying colors or other uh, features but uh, JPG is mostly what we are dealing with in our works, okay? So let's just move on to the next topic, which is the topic of pixels. Now, what is a pixel? Well, the easiest definition is that it's what images are made out of. And although it may seem like an ordinary topic, but it's very important to our work and it's very important to pay attention to pixels and if i wanted to give you a better definition i would say it's just a bunch of squares a number of squares that are put together and make up the image 
like the animation that you're seeing on the right. So we call these little squares that are put together pixels. So if I wanted to give you another example, you can just imagine putting pieces of a puzzle together, but all the pieces are in the shape of uh, squares. And when you put the pieces together, you get the final image. Now in the example that you just saw in the animation, the pixels were too big, but in uh, reality, the pixels are a lot smaller and they can only possess one color. So I'm going to show you what I mean inside Photoshop. So I have taken this photo to Photoshop. Now if I hold down Alt on my keyboard and scroll inside, we are moving in on the image and we're about to see the pixels. So these are the pixels that I was talking about. And as you can see, each one of them can only uh, encapsulate one color. So these are pixels. And as you can see, they are a lot smaller than that example, the previous example. So this is what images are composed of. And it's just these little pixels. Now, it doesn't matter what type of image it is. It doesn't matter what type of file that is and how big the image is. Down to their core, all images consist of pixels. Okay. So what we have talked about so far is these pixels that are like pieces of a puzzle. They are all in the shape of a square and they uh, make up our image. The next topic that we want to talk about is resolution. Now, I think most of you are already pretty familiar with the concept of resolution. But even if you are not, I'm pretty sure that you have heard it a couple of times before. And we have different resolutions. For example, we have SD, HD, Full HD, and 4K that uh, I'm pretty sure that you have all have heard before. If we were to count the number of squares for the width and the height of this image, we were to find out the resolution. So that's basically what we mean by resolution. It's the number of squares that make up our final image and we have different names for different numbers. These are some of the most famous ones like HD and Full HD. Now, let me just go back inside Photoshop and show you inside this image. If I were to, for example, zoom in on a brighter part of the image. So if you were to count all these little squares, we would have a number for the width and the height. And that's what we, we call resolution. Now, if I hold on Control, Alt, and press I, I get this uh, window. And if I put this on pixels, you can see that it gives me the number of pixels for width, which is 1400 right now, and height, which is 2100. So this is 1400 pixels for the width and 2100 for our height. This is basically the resolution for this image. Okay, so this is what I mean by resolution. It's the number of squares. And uh, like I showed you before, we can just count them. If we were to count them one by one, we would get 1400 for our width and 12, uh, 2100 for our height. Okay, so we learned what resolution means. It's basically the number of squares that make up our image. And it's a given that uh, the more squares we have, the better the resolution and the better the resolution, the more clear our final image and the better quality for that image. Okay, so we have uh, SD, which is 720 in 576. We have HD, which is uh, a better quality. It's 1280 in 720. And we also have uh, full HD, which is 1920 and 1080. And we have 4K, which is 3840 in 2160. Now let's learn more about resolution with an example. I'm going to go back inside Photoshop and decrease the resolution for this image. Again, I press Ctrl Alt and I and I get this window. And as we saw before, it has a resolution of 1400 in 2100. Now, I want you to pay attention to the quality of this horse figurine that we have here. Now, I'm going to 
uh, press down control alt and i and i'm going to change the, num the number of pixels for the width i'm going to for example put 700 and it will give me a proportionate height as well 1050 and if i press ok you can see that this time if i press ok this time if i go back and I look at the horse figurine it's showing me a lesser quality of that uh, object okay so we have less pixels that uh, make up this horse figurine so let me just put 350 let's look at it again and even less quality see less pixels less quality let's just exaggerate put something like 125 for the width go back check it out it doesn't even look like a horse anymore you know it has very few pixels and let's just uh, just continue the process let's put uh 60 for example let's put 60 for the width okay it has just like six nine pixels and it, the quality is terrible all right and even if you put 30 you can just just count the number of pixels let me just put 50 we can just count them one by one by eye and we have very low quality so this is what I mean by resolution okay so you are now pretty much uh, familiar with the term resolution let me just do a few control Z's so that we are back at our original image now let me just show you something else what happens if I put in higher numbers bigger numbers than our original image let's try that too for example if I put 2800 for my width and click on OK what happens do I get a better quality picture not necessarily do you know why because my original image size or pixel size was 1400 for the width and 2100 for my height and because it was rendered at that size I cannot choose to have a bigger size for it okay I cannot upscale it in terms of quality so the process that I just showed you does not work in reverse and we cannot upscale the quality of our original image past its uh, original image size now now if you want to be able to zoom in on your uh, images or pictures a lot you should have a 4k or maybe a 6k image and have a higher original image size and if your original image is something like an SD image or an HD image you cannot zoom in that much without losing quality now the next topic that we want to cover is DPI now DPI stands for dot per inch and by dot we mean pixels per inch so it means basically how many pixels should we have in an inch of our image now based on where you are living in the world you may be working with a different metric system for example centimeters and uh, meters and that's okay one inch basically amounts to 2.54 centimeters and by saying that we have a DPI of X for example it means that we have X number of pixels inside an inch or a centimeters based on our metric system okay so let me just show you inside Photoshop I uh, open this image size window again you can see right now uh, here that we have pixels per inch resolution so if I put one here for example it means I have one pixel for an inch of my image okay and my width would be 574 and my height would be 861 if I put two it means that I, ha I would have two pixels per an inch of my image okay so this is what I mean by DPI so resolution here inside this image is basically my DPI and I can just change these values from uh, pixels to inches and centimeters as well it doesn't really uh, matter because I'm going to be controlling this number so right now it's the same thing basically I have one uh, pixel per an inch of my image and the number for my width and height remains the same now let me try out a different number for example this should be an inch and I'm gonna put in 10 for 
resolution here if I do this if I put 10 here basically now I have 10 pixels per an inch of my image and I would have 5740 pixels for my width and 8610 for my height okay so you get the idea this is what I mean by DPI and right now if I zoom in you can see that we have a lot more pixels because we 10x the number of resolution in that uh, image size window here and that's why we have a lot more pixels now I'm going to tell you when we are working with 3ds max we're going to have a number like 72 for our dpi which is basically resolution in this image and I'm going to explain all about that later on but a number like that would be sufficient for our renders inside 2ds max now again uh, this number may be different based on whether you are working with centimeters or inches but the image dimensions that we are required to have for having a certain quality is roughly a certain uh, number and we will talk about that later on so let me just recap again with another example right now if i put this on centimeters for example my width is 1458 centimeters and i have one pixel per each centimeter okay and I can just put in two and so on you get the idea so let me just put this back on pixels and let's just go back and continue with the rest of our discussion so hopefully now you have a good idea of what DPI means which is dot per inch it's basically pixels per an inch of our image or it can be centimeters okay now it's time to go inside 3ds max which is a modeling software and learn where to control the size of our render image okay so we're going to do that together now i'm going to go to 3ds max and i'm going to show you how you can just choose a different size for your rendering image now i'm inside 3ds max and i have included this certain scene for you so you can just practice with it and uh, take uh, you know test renders now if I press C I go inside my camera if I press P I go to my perspective and these are some of the controls that could come really handy when you are working inside 3ds max so if I go to rendering this uh, item here and click on render setup I get a new window we're going to be dealing with common but make sure that your renderer is on V-Ray 6 but the common is a, it's, it's a common tab basically so even if you have corona as your renderer you would have access to the common uh, tab okay so as you can see you would have access to it regardless of your renderer but make sure that you select uh, VRA6 and inside common if we go to common parameters and then look at output size is basically what we are looking for so we can just determine what type of width and height we would want to have in terms of pixels so 1400 in 2100 for now and we can just uh, change it to the to any number that we would like and our final render results would have that uh, image uh, dimension okay so another thing that I want to show you is basically this uh, item here which is on custom so usually we keep it on custom because we want to provide the dimension ourselves but we have other options in terms of uh, dimensions which are available to us now the main reason that we usually keep this on custom is that sometimes we play with these numbers and we forget that we have a frame so we should always pay attention to our frame because the frame matters for example right now for width is 25 74 if I put uh, for example 500 our frame would be extremely narrowed and I should always keep an eye on my frame so basically this yellow color uh, frame that you are seeing right now is called show frame and you can just enable it by pressing shift and F on your keyboard and you would easily see your render frame and that's a very useful thing to pay attention to all right so we learned about output size and the next thing that i want to tell you is that sometimes we are taking test renders from our work and we want to have them uh, readily 
available and be quickly rendered. So the numbers that we would choose for our test renders is something like a thousand for width or maybe even less, 800 or so. And if we want to have our final image, something that we would want to give a client, we would have numbers like 2000, 3000 and even more. If we want to have it be on a billboard or a banner, a physical one, then we would need to ramp up these numbers to something like maybe even 8,000. Okay, so that's something that we would need to keep in mind the purpose of the renders that we want to have. Now, let me show you something. As I'm playing with the width size, you can see that my height is the same and that kind of uh, messes up my frame. If you want to rectify that problem and have a proportionate height, you should uh, enable this lock here. So now if I change the width, the height is automatically changed as well to a proportionate number. Right now it's 800 for the width. If I put 8,000, for example, let me just put in 8,000, I would have 12,000 for my height. And that's a proportionate number that will keep the same dimensions that I originally had in mind. And that's another useful thing to consider when you are working with these numbers. Now, uh, obviously, if you use uh, large numbers for your uh, output size in terms of dimension, it will take a lot more time to render. OK, so so as I said before, the purpose of your render is really important. So for test renders, keep it below 1000 and for your final renders, maybe two or three thousand. OK. Now, as we move throughout the course, you will learn how important these numbers can be in terms of our final render quality. And right now I'm going to take a test render for you so that you can see the process. I'm going to keep these numbers. I'm going to click on render and the process is going to start. It's going to take some time for it to be rendered. So I have 1000 for width, 1500 for my height and 72 for my DPI as a default number, which basically means I have 72 pixels per an inch of my image. OK, so I'm going to stop this render prematurely right now so that I can show you something. So I stop this render. I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to choose a name for it. For example, one, two, three. I am going to select a JPEG format for it. So I have access to all the formats here, but I'm going to select JPEG or JPG. OK, and I'm going to click on save. And um, right now I'm going to put the controls on best for quality and large for file size and maybe normal for a smoothing. I'm going to click on OK and let's take a look at that uh, image inside Photoshop. OK, so I'm going to find it one, two, three here. So this is our image. I press Control Alt and I so I get this image size. Right now I have 1000 pixels in width, 1500 in height, and I have DPI of 72. So basically 72 pixels per an inch of my image. OK, and if I change pixels into centimeters, it would get different numbers, 35 and 52. OK, so if we were to print this image on an A4 paper, we would get a nice enough quality. But for anything bigger, maybe a banner, the quality is not sufficient. All right, let's not get distracted by these numbers. So you learned about uh, the output size from the comment tab of our render setup and you learned about these numbers. So basically you should just take a note for test renders. The numbers should be less than a thousand, maybe 800. But for final images, you can just use 2000 or 3000. And we also have some certain sizes readily available here. If we click on it, we would get a different frame. And we should always pay attention to the frame because it's really important. We usually keep this on custom, but if it were required, we can just use any size that we want it to have. But make sure to know what type of frame you are working with. OK, so for example, this is another frame that I just picked, a very small one, and we can just always change it. Now, later on in the course, I will tell you all about the golden ratios and the golden output sizes that will make your work a very high quality one and very attractive. But that's it for this session. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned a lot and I will see you in the next video.